Mystery shopping is dumb. People who pretend to be customers contact a service organisation in order to assess the customer experience, a bit like being a modern day spy. Mystery shoppers do their assessments by ticking off things on their checklists. Then reports are prepared for management. I wrote about the problems with mystery shopping in my first book, I Want You to Cheat, back in 1992. In those days, I thought it would disappear as a flash in the pan fad. But now it's even more popular. Mystery shopping is popular because it gives command and control managers something to do. They get involved in determining what's on the mystery shopper's checklist. Then they get to read reports and they can pass the conclusions down the hierarchy, demanding that action be taken. They think that mystery shopping will help them control frontline people's behaviour. Mystery shoppers measure the mechanics of service, how long it takes to get served, what the service agent says or does. But service has little to do with mechanics. Service is all about what matters to customers. I remember being with a car salesman when his phone rang. He became quite animated and immediately searched through his desk drawers for a manual. The call went on for quite a time, and when eventually it finished, I asked what was going on. Why was he so animated? Oh, that was a mystery shopper, he said. They don't behave like normal people. They ask questions normal customers don't ask. So I always get the training manual out, because I know the mystery shoppers read that to work out what to say. A TV programme on mystery shopping showed a mystery shopper going into an Irish pub. The pub was clearly full of bonhomie. A right good crack was going on. I wondered, was there a tick box for that on the checklist? What the mystery shopper was ticking off was things like, if I ask for half of lager, do they offer me a choice? So mystery shopping is used to check up on whether frontline people are doing the things managers want them to do. How can this be used to improve the customer experience? It can't. But what does mystery shopping say about the way managers think of their people? While offering a choice of lagers might seem innocuous, think of management's insistence that the end of a telephone call should include the question, is there anything else I can help you with today? And suppose the customer's just been complaining about something. The frontline person knows full well that to ask this question will cause an eruption. But if they don't ask the question, it could mean failing a mystery shop. Do you have the dreadful experience of being sold to whenever you ring a service provider? Agents are given cross-sales and up-sales targets, and one way to enforce this behaviour is to use the fear of failing a mystery shop. So even when the agent knows the customer would have no interest in buying, they have to engage in selling. And as we show elsewhere on this website, targeting up-selling and cross-selling things actually drives sales down. But it ticks the box for the mystery shopper. Conventional managers like mystery shopping because it reinforces their need to feel in control. But are they in control? Controlling frontline people's behaviour actually tampers with the system. It makes service worse. Working to specifications is in direct opposition to responding to the customer's nominal value, the things that matter to each and every customer. Rather than sitting in their offices and spending time and money on mystery shopping, managers should learn about what's happening to their customers at the points of transaction. And that is best achieved by studying demand. When managers study what's going on for their customers, they start to learn what drives their people's behaviour in responding to their customers. They learn that people's behaviour is governed by the system. Mystery shopping is just another unhelpful system condition. When they learn these things, managers will stop wasting money on mystery shopping. Mystery shopping is dumb.